Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back on their video, and today I have got to talk to you guys about all of the reveals and all of the cool stuff that was shown today at Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. There is a whole bunch of stuff that was shown. Some of it's already been leaked and some of it's already been talked about, but we actually got a more details about them and it's actually very, very exciting. Of course, I got a lot to talk about, so sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's transform and roll out. <laughs> Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Okay, so today was Hasbro Pulse's Fan Fest, and there was a lot of really cool reveals, especially here in the world of Transformers, and they had <laughs> kind of made mention of it during the live event that yes, some of it had already been leaked ahead of time, but there were some things they were able to keep under wraps. Here is the packaging for the ARC, and I had made mention of the ARC already on a previous video, but there are a lot of cool features with this ARC that were not shown in the early reveals and the early leaks and such that really make this ARC worth it. And the other thing is, I mean, first of all, his face is obviously the Autobot symbol based upon the last Autobot, and they said that the packaging has some Easter eggs on it, but if you kind of look, you can see the Nemesis there on the top. And I'm not sure what's going on here on the battle, the bottom there, that's clearly Megatron. And I'm guessing what they're doing is the core class figures are supposed to be, I guess, kind of in scale. But the thing is, is that one of the accessories was this little uh, Optimus Prime figure. But, and, I, and really quickly, I want to give a shout out to Rachel and Mark, who are at Hasbro here, specifically because they were the ones hosting the panel. Rachel is on the marketing side of things, and she's 38 weeks pregnant, and she says she has a Decepticon in her stomach who is giving those kicks. Uh, so I want to give a congratulations to her, and uh, we'll see what... Uh, you know what what the future brings for that but i want to talk about mark's desk in particular because there's a lot of interesting details if you paid attention that may or may not be spoilerific for things that were not even shown during the this event and specifically if you take a look here behind the uh, the uh, kingdom rodimus prime it kind of looks like that there is another Hot Rod or Rodimus because you've got the buzzsaw from the Studio Series 86 there in a different position on the packaging. So I'm curious as to what Transformer might be on the inside there. Who knows? That might be a thing to do with what's going on on the shirts here. And that has to do with Shattered Glass. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a Shattered Glass Hot Rod. That wasn't revealed today. There are a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm going to talk about. And Mark showed off the actual arc itself to see how big the thing is. And it's massive. You know, and that's a good thing. If you're going to have a Titan class figure, it better be big. And on the packaging itself, they reveal that the Autobot who is transforming into Teletran 1 is in fact mainframe so that's going to be the official name for the autobot which again i made mention of in my news video take a look at this it also has another alternate mode which kind of looks like i don't know if this is a repair bay or something else but it comes with two golden discs and that to me is awesome because you know, it's a kind of a feature that you, you want. You want to be able to actually have Dinobot holding them up and doing the whole Macbeth thing. So even more and more, they're, they're really selling me on this arc. And from what I've been told, people have been trying to all day today try to get their pre-order in for the arc. I'm sure, or at least I hope so, that it will show up on toy shelves because I'm really not a big fan of trying to do all these pre-orders because they don't tell you when it's, they tell you it's going to ship at a certain day, it doesn't ship at another date, and then, you know, you order it, and then, like, they don't take it out of the money out of your credit card until it actually ships, so, like, if you forgot about it and ended up spending the money, <laughs> you might end up not being able to uh, pay for a lot of this stuff, but it ends up happening, and, uh, you know, but, like, this particular toy, 
um, is kind of like the more and more I'm seeing of it, the more I'm being sold on it quite a bit. They also showed off how Rodimus Prime in particular that his chest does in fact open. You have the Matrix there and he has a lot of cool features. In particular, he showed how he transforms Rodimus Prime or takes Rodimus Prime in truck mode and uh, is able to connect them together very easily. Again, I mean, I don't mind the fact that they have like the whole slit for the spoiler, but I wish the piping was connected completely and that the wheels matched a little bit better when they are connected. But that is something that from official images, you know, it still looks good in my opinion. I am still psyched for this figure. But he was showing also how the truck mode itself opens so that you can store so much into it. The idea behind Rodimus Prime's trailer is that you're going to be able to store a lot of weapons and, and, uh, and armaments, you know, in Rodimus Prime. So if you need a weapon storage for all of your other, uh, you know, for your blast effects and your, you know, different weapons for other Transformers, you can store them in Rodimus Prime's trailer. And I think that is a cool, uh, you know, function and feature out of it because they've added more to his storage. Like even the front can open here. Like that's the whole idea behind it. And the, the battle platform itself is a, you know, a transforming, uh, you know, cannon that does detach and the other thing to take note of as i was looking at his desk was the fact that galvatron here scales really well with cyclonus he actually stands like a like a slightly taller and rodimus prime is around the same height too so i'm definitely psyched for both figures now i'd already talked about scorponok before but they now have some more official images including a better look at the cyber bee and he does look good i think the purple should have been a little bit more blue but uh, you know the thing is that the toy still does look good and you know i'm not really a big fan of the weaponizers but they're doing fossilizers with the kingdom line and this one in particular is a maximal ninja that transforms into a pteranodon fossil and he kind of looks all right but there is an added feature bonus in addition to being able to transform into like a whole weapon set like for wheeljack that you can see here Mark showed off here a bunch of different, um, you know, fossilizers all brought together to form a combiner out of them. And that was the whole part of the design aspect of the fossilizers. It's really not my cup of tea. I really would have liked to have seen Magnaboss or uh, Tripredicus, but I guess this kind of does, especially if you really are a fan of the fossilizers. They just really aren't my cup of tea. However, there were two more fossilizers that they showed off. One is a core class uh, by the name of Dracodon, and he's this green color. He comes, transforms into this uh, green, I forgot the name of the dinosaur. It is kind of cool that there is some more. I wish there were more Dinobots and actual Beast Wars characters. I will say though, that Tricranius, I think his name is, that's uh, Tricranius, it does kind of look cool. I like this color scheme, the black and the red, and you know, all of the weapons and stuff like that, that he, kinda, the way he transforms in particular, he is a re-deco of, uh, I think it was, I forgot which one of the fossilizers it was, but it does look good in both modes. But the cool feature about this thing is that he comes with a ton of blast effects. If you're looking for uh, blue and magenta blast effects, he comes with a whole set of them, uh, which is really great for battle dioramas so that you can get all of these different colors uh, with him. And it does, look, it is pretty cool. I guess if you get all of those uh, blast effects, you can store them inside Rodimus Prime's trailer. That's kind of the idea, but, um, you know, that's probably the only selling point to this. And the reason why they decided to do this was because the Centaurian uh, drone pack that came out last year with all the weapon kits, this is kind of like in that same vein, according to what they said during the, the, uh, the live stream. But when I was thinking about it, I go, you know, they really should release more of that Centaurian drone. I really hope that they re-release some of these, the, the, the Earthrise stuff and Generation Selects when it first came out. To, cut, to be able to get your hands on it because all these other Transformers are coming out and I'm like, but what about the stuff that we couldn't get our hands on before? 
Now, I'm not going to lie, I, I've not really been collecting a lot of the core class stuff. I know a lot of people really like the Megatron and the Optimus that came out. And, uh, you know, Rat Trap in particular, obviously, in order to complete your uh, Beast Wars Season 1. But they do have a Soundwave in core class here. And he looks really good. It looks like he almost has, like, more paint applications than the Netflix uh, Soundwave that had recently come out. So I'm like... If you really kind of want a smaller cassette version of, you know, Soundwave to be able to transform into his cassette mode, except for his feet sticking out, he does look really good. He comes with a smaller, uh, non, I think it's a non-transforming cassette of Laserbeak, which is very cool to have as an accessory. Now, even though he'd rather stay in his stunning auto mode, we have Trax here, and uh, he looks great. Uh, it looks like he is a retool in some way, form or fashion of the battle chargers run amok, run amok and run about, but I could be wrong. And I'm only saying that because specifically he has that faux chest and the way that the backpack, you know, folds down for him. It's not the same as his, uh, you know, his G1 counterpart, uh, because the toys are, you know, very different, but I think he looks good. Personally, I mean, other than the faux chest, I do wish that it was part of his chest. Does look good, has a pretty good head sculpt. I like the fact that he has like the missile launchers there, like the on the top, and he does come with his glass gun. And if you've been wondering, yes, I do intend to do a retrospective on the character. I have been waiting for this toy to be revealed before I. Uh, you know, went ahead to do so. Plus, I'm going to be doing some Beast Wars retrospectives. So, you know, you're going to stay tuned and I'll eventually get to tracks. I, I do plan on him. But in his stunning auto mode, it is very stunning indeed, except for the fact that, of course, the translucent plastic, you know, does show off a lot of the insides of him in car mode. But uh, he does look good. They're trying to still keep that sleek look while not invoking a, I guess, a copyright on the Corvette that the original tracks transformed into. So he does look the part, except for the fact that he doesn't have the same transform that he had before, but I do like him. And he has his flying car mode, which is an added feature. No, he's not a triple changer. It was just somebody that was finagling with the toy and came up with the idea of a flying car mode you know, that since he has wings that stick out, you know, he can actually kind of fold himself up into his, uh, you know, he can actually fold himself out into a flying car. And it is a neat little feature that he has. And I think it's one of the cool things that make tracks unique in addition to his Harvard lockjaw that he is well known for. For those of you who are waiting to complete their season one of Beast Wars, well, you're going to be able to get your hands on a Rhinox. I'm hoping for a Tigertron as well, but this particular Rhinox figure does look really good. I I have the Generations 1 not opened out of the package. I think it was the Thrilling 30, I think it came out for. and um, But I think this is around the same size, or it could be maybe smaller a little bit. But he has painted Gatling guns, which is a good feature. The head sculpt kind of reminds me of... Um, Later interpretations of Rhinox, I wish it was a little bit more animation accurate in that respect, but, you know, taking a look at it, um, but it does look good. If you want to get your hands on a Rhinox, this is a good, decent version, at least as far from what I can tell, and uh, the Rhino mode itself has, you know, a opening and closing Rhino mouth, and on top of that, here is a full shot of the Rhino mode, and the horn itself, they said, is a like a like a soft PVC. Um, so I'm hoping that that is pretty durable, and I'm hoping that the the legs themselves have some poseability because it kind of doesn't look as poseable as it should. And one of the big reveals, obviously, as I had talked about before, was shattered glass. I mentioned this in the listing leaks uh in my last news video that they were kind of looking at doing shattered glass i kind of figured that they were going to do a re deco with a new head on a shattered for you know for shattered glass for blur since they already have the studio series 86 mold and the head sculpt looks a lot better personally i kind of like just taking a closer look at it 
you know, looking at that head sculpt, you know, it has like a like an eye patch on him and it looks really good. I wish that this particular head sculpt was used on the Studio Series 86 without the battle damaged face or the weird smirk, like kind of like like a like a better face because I don't have the Studio Series 86 blur, but the robot mode looks really good with the exception of like the longer face, but I'd have to see it in person uh, before I kind of make a judgment call. But either way, if you do like the idea behind Shattered Glass, it seems that they are going to tickle your fancy and probably do an entire series on it. I believe as um, the live stream was happening, they said they are going to do an exclusive comic book uh, for Shattered Glass that is going to be a little bit more, um, you know, in depth with the storytelling. And I'm eager to see where they go with it. All right, so they got Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith to reveal a transforming Optimus Prime. And they were uh, just as excited as I was. When I saw this, I was, I was like, this is completely insane. It is a $700 transforming toy. And here's the thing. There has been video online of people who have been sharing with me someone, like I think this particular company actually made it made a transforming optimus prime and now i guess hasbro picked up on it and was like we'll officially license it yeah go ahead sell it with our with our name on it and they got peter cullen to do the voice of optimus prime on it it self transforms it has a ton of parts like just seeing how many parts that are made out of this thing like it's nuts like they said like just how much mechanicals uh go into it i know it's kind of not really a word but but taking a closer look at it, like it's really highly detailed and it kind of looks decent in both modes. I mean, in robot mode, you know, you can see like, like all the function and feature out of this thing. But they were saying this thing has 25 voice commands. He can like pose and he's programmable. It uses Peter Cullen's, um, you know, voice as you know you talk to him you say optimus prime and he says greetings you know you know go ahead and convert they use the word convert because uh I'm, apparently you can't that they, they want to prevent in all their marketing to lose the trademark for transformers so they've been using the word convert to describe transforming but that is what they do they are the transformers and uh so like that's probably what you heard but something i thought that was absolutely hysterical when he mentioned peter cullen doing the voice of optimus prime he literally said uh, you know uh oh it's the real voice of optimus prime i was like well played kevin smith well played but standing at 19 inches tall this thing like can can pose in all bunch of different ways and it comes with a like a collector's uh case so this way that you can show off your friends that you spent $700 on an Optimus Prime that can talk to you, uh, I think is a pretty nifty uh, collector's item for sure. Me personally, I don't think I can afford $700 on an Optimus Prime. It definitely would be cool to add to the collection or maybe have sitting here behind me talking, but you know, I don't think I can wing it. But, but I wonder what you guys think about all this Transformers news. Are you excited for things like the uh, the talking trans, you know, transforming by command Optimus Prime and all of the different Kingdom releases and even the Shattered Glass stuff? What did you think of Hasbro's Pulse fan event? Uh, of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. I have much more Transformers content coming down the pipeline, so you can stay tuned for all of that. And as always, guys, until next time till all are one.